okay, it's time. This can't be no longer dropping like the NASDAQ. Move white girls like it's coke up my ass rap. Move black girls, plus man, fuck it, I'll do either. I love pussy, I love bitches. Ah, horseshoe theory. The idea that if you go far enough left or right, you end up with ideologies that are paradoxically similar to each other. Centrists and moderates particularly like it because it suggests that the further ideas get from their political orientation, the more dangerous they become. Unfortunately, it's wrong. The top line failings of horseshoe theory are predictable. It oversimplifies the political landscape as does the left-right linear political spectrum it depends on. Ultimately, political ideologies are more complicated than simply left or right, and they concern much more than just economic policy, which US politics tends to fixate on. Democratic socialism and social liberalism share more policy positions than, say, Marxism and neoconservatism, but that doesn't make them necessarily subsequent to each other on the same continuum. They're still independent ideologies based on their own sets of values and principles. Don't make the mistake of following horseshoe theory into the argument to moderation fallacy, or the idea that the best answer is always a compromise between opposing positions. We don't find the difference between right and wrong somewhere in the middle. It's in the careful consideration of our lived experiences with each other. I honestly have no idea why he does this. Um, my working theory is that he's stupid. Reduce your expectations to zero. Letting Paisley pick her identities. Pronouns. <laughs> Give it to me. It hits. Fuck out my way when you see me. I roll it with the LGBT. Sexuality. <laughs> Bring it back. <laughs> okay. Straight. Political ideology. Communist. Religious affiliation. Wiccan. College major. <laughs> Musical theater. How does a bastard, orphan, son of a whore? Hogwarts house. Gryffindor. Let's talk about the African queen who supposedly made her lovers fight to the death for her. Allow me to introduce Queen Singa Mbanze, monarch of the Mbundu people and resilient leader who fought against the Portuguese and resisted colonization right up until her death in 1663. Born around 1583 in present-day Angola, legend has it that Queen Singa Mbanze was named so because she was born with the umbilical cord wrapped around her neck, and this indicated that she would become a wise and proud woman. And you know what? No lies were told because that that's exactly what happened. In 1622, when asked by her brother to negotiate a peace treaty with the Portuguese governor, Nzinga gained prepared. You see, European officials often mocked African delegates by making them sit on the ground and did so in order to impose their superiority. So when no one offered a chair for her to sit on, she ordered one of her servants to get down on all fours and sat on their back throughout negotiations in order to assert her status as an equal to the governor. And after becoming queen in 1626, Nzinga assigned women to important government positions, led a powerful guerrilla army, and started a 30-year war against the Portuguese. It's also said that she had a harem of 50 to 60 men and made them fight to the death if they wanted to spend a night with her. Then, after a single night of passion, they were put to death. But described as a skillful negotiator, diplomat, and military strategist, Queen Singa defied gender norms and fearlessly resisted colonial rule, eventually becoming an inspiration in the struggle for independence.
Oh, that's really interesting. What no one's really talking about is wokeness. What? And the threat that the woke pose to society. Now, what are you talking about? I know we've all met those who identify as cat or helicopter. <laughs> I've never met Which is weird, by the way. Helicopter. And it's honestly just a bummer. So that's why we need to stop woke 2022. Because the woke, woke. think that they can walk in this joint. And instead of getting their woke up, they need to get their money up. Look, there is many things that our society faces today. And wokeness is one of them. And wokeness is the worst. What are you talking you about? Some may ask me, what is woke? Well... I asked myself the same question. I believe that woke is what they're telling my son in school regarding evolution, which is interesting. Not true. Also, Not they true. said that gender may be on a spectrum. <laughs> uh, color wheels on a spectrum. That is art class. That's what I told his teacher, but <laughs> they did not follow. This army, this, wo this war on woke will not be an easy one, but just like the war on drugs, it will be a success. Autism Speaks. <laughs> I sure hope it does. Autism Speaks is a terrible organization that supported the anti-vaxxer movement for years before they cleaned up their public image and never actually acknowledged it. Only 1% of the budget actually goes towards family services for people with autism. A few years ago, they released a short film in which a mother tried to kill her autistic child and the only reason that she didn't drive off the bridge to do it is because she had a neurotypical child. They also had an ad campaign called I Am Autism where they said that autistic children will steal your marriage and ruin your child. <laughs> Get overdressed with me for class using this advent calendar of outfit prompts that my mom made. Today was day one and I scratched off the prompt bows. I started with this neon sign dress because it had all of the colors that I wanted to incorporate and then I added some red tights underneath it. But I decided that I wanted to wear the dress as a shirt so I added these pink pants that you can still see the red tights through. I added this pink checkerboard shirt to bring some warmth to my arms and then finally got into the actual prompt by adding this rainbow bow tie but one bow was certainly not enough so I made a bunch out of sheets of craft foam and attached them to the outfit as well. Then I added my black boots and my black jacket, but I was annoyed at how plain my black jacket was, so I decided to make even more bows and attach them to the jacket, and I tied a necktie into a bow as well, which is that big blue one that you see on the back. And those are all the clothes, so now getting into makeup, I did a pink and yellow eyeshadow and eyeliner look and added black eyeliner over it. And then I drew some bows on my cheeks as well. On one cheek, I did purple and orange, and on the other, I did blue and green but the blue and purple were a little bit too small and out of place, so I ended up redoing them, and I outlined all of the bows in black and gave them white highlights, which really made them pop. And I glued some gems to my face to add some sparkle. There's the finished makeup look, and then I curled my hair as I always do. And of course, I had to add a bow to my hair, so I put this yellow one in, and then I made some earrings for the look that I really like. They're super cute. And that's the finished look. I think it's so fun and I'm really obsessed with it. So let me know what you think. Mommy, I really like corn. What do you like about corn? It's corn! I 
I want to show you how street designs can make this very walkable distance my kids and I are taking to the park pretty unwalkable. So it's 0.7 miles, let's check it out. The first example is construction that closes down the sidewalk. It's not a big deal here because we have another sidewalk and it's not a busy street. In other countries, they would have a protected walk lane in the street. Next is this four lane road that doesn't need to be four lanes. It necks down to two lanes up there and the two lanes back there. This used to be almost like a little downtown for the neighborhood with lots of shops, very walkable. Even had a train going down the middle a hundred years ago. We're actually gonna go a block over because it's just not safe. There's no barriers in between the callers and pedestrians and it's a really fast road. Also notice how the light poles are set back from the road. This protects cars from accidentally hitting hit it if they swirl off the road. This design says we don't want cars to hit light poles, but we don't mind if they hit pedestrians. We're back on this road because over here they gave it a road diet. They knocked it down to two lanes, added street parking and a bicycle lane. But this used to be four lanes. And when it was, there was such a problem with cars running in the building that people set up these barriers and they even had this to protect um, pedestrians. Literally, this parking lane was a car lane, like cars driving full speed right here. It was so bad here that any, any businesses that stayed here actually had their entrance in the back, in the alleyway, and they even moved their trash cans to this side because it was so unused. The road diet only happened about three months ago, but since then, a business has opened up with their storefront on this side. Having to walk around trash cans is kind of jank. You know it's bad for pedestrians if they make their entrance the alleyway and the sidewalk their alley. Here's the business that just opened up. It's a bike shop. Check out this intersection. You need to go that way and there's a crossing uh, light, but the pedestrian path is literally just, just a train path. Look how busy this is and there's no like pedestrian island. Just gotta make it over there. No sidewalk on this side either. The light went through a whole cycle without giving us a go ahead to walk. Again, there's no sidewalk on this side. Now the sidewalk butts up against a four lane road. Now the sidewalk just ends. No crosswalk to get across. So we're gonna go on the railroad track. Now, even if there was a way to get across and walk on that sidewalk, there's no way to get back at the park. Have to go way over there to the green light to cross. So it requires jaywalking. And technically I'm at the park, but they've created this high fence. I can't even get there. I have to walk all the way around it. This distance doesn't feel like much when you're driving because it was built for cars. We're here, we just have to cross this sea of a parking lot. This is the closest good park to our house that's not connected to a school. There's a safer route here that's longer, but Apple Maps didn't even suggest that route. Cars made a 0.7 mile walk unwalkable. Hey everyone, this is an ideology reveal for people who may be new to my content because a lot of people get confused. They see an American talking about socialism and even communism sometimes. And what is that, a hammer and sickle on their wall? Oh my gosh, they obviously just want everyone to be killed and enslaved and have an evil dictatorship. Ah. So yes, I'm a Marxist, but that term is kind of confusing to a lot of people. So here are some examples of things I would like to see change in this country that my ideology informs. So first, before we can do anything else, we need unions. We need labor to be behind any movement that we want to be successful. Look throughout history, throughout the world, any successful movement had labor behind it look at even the civil rights movement. They had so many successful strikes and boycotts and really effective forms of protest because they had organized labor. I think a lot of liberals in this country think we live in a free democracy where we all have a say, but we live in a market economy first and foremost. So look around, all of our media is owned by these giant corporations and they push for the same corporate friendly politicians so anything that is even on a table has the corporate seal of approval on it. So that's why we need to take power back down from these giant corporations. So part two is more small businesses, worker owned small businesses throughout the country. We need to have an economic revolution 
from the bottom up. These serve two purposes. The first is to bring wealth and resources down to the working class that can propel a successful movement uh, beyond this into the future. And the second purpose is educational. This serves as almost like propaganda. It shows people, you know, when your friends or your neighbors or you yourself work in a worker owned business, a worker cooperative, um, that is a successful model. It's wildly successful when everyone can have input, everyone has an equal say, and everyone is getting fair value from their labor. And the third thing, hopefully, these two can lead us toward is more nationalization, more public options. Obviously, you know, let's get real, everybody. America is going to be a market economy for the foreseeable future, but some public options for food, for housing, for health care, and even in the job market, we could have a national jobs program that will be competitive with the free market and it will be better off for everyone. These are just some of the things that Marxism means to me as an American. Oh, I forgot. We should also execute people for polluting the environment and serious white collar crime. Capitalism is so gross. Just like so unfair. We need equity, you know? Oh, what's it take to get another Vente caramel, half soy, no whip, pumpkin spice, peppermint, mocha, sugar free, full fat, hold the fat latte around here? People are literally dying and suffering because of late stage capitalism, yet boomers and Gen X still make the same tired joke saying, How do you criticize capitalism yet you use an iPhone and drink Starbucks coffee? This idea that you can't be a member of society yet criticize it makes no sense whatsoever. I'm a member of capitalism, don't like it, but guess what? I have to partake in it to survive. I have a good job and I make good money. I am a member of a capitalistic society. That doesn't mean I can't be critical of it because I see that it affects other people. It's called having empathy and understanding. A great example of late stage capitalism literally exploiting the middle and working class is the pending rail strike that's about to occur. Rail workers in the United States are asking for higher wages and a minimum of seven days paid sick leave. They currently do not get any sick leave whatsoever. Last year alone, the rail barons made over $20 billion in profits. These billionaires made $20 billion and are saying that they cannot pay for sick leave for their workers. The United States government is actively getting involved with Congress and Senate to stop a looming strike because it's estimated if they went on strike, it would cost the U.S. economy $2 billion a day. So these rail workers are essential and vital to the United States economy, yet billionaires are holding the United States hostage because they don't want to pay for their employees to be sick. That is exploitation of late stage capitalism on the working class. Nothing to do with people drinking a fucking drink from Starbucks. I'm autistic. I'm black and autistic. I usually have to mask. I have to mask too, and honestly, it's so hard. I know, right? Keeping up with neurotypicals have got to be so draining. Not only do we have to mask in front of neurotypicals, but we have to mask in front of white autistics. Why do you say that? It's just, um, sometimes I have to walk on eggshells with you. Why is that? We're both autistic. Yes, but sometimes as a black person in a mostly white space, sometimes you're scared if other people might not like you for either who you are or what you believe in. Oh, like autistic people have to be around neurotypical spaces. Yeah, kinda. You wanna know what connects us both? 
our strong sense of justice. Want to call out Autism Speaks? Sure! What is that? A ring pop? Why? Telling you if a book is worth your time with a simple yes or no. Yes. 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 Oh my gosh, yes. Yes, but in all capitals. Uh, actually, yes, this one too. Oh my gosh, I love this one, yes. Yes. Ah, uh, yes! If you need a nonfiction guide to buying holiday gifts for your friends and family, I'm gonna run through a bunch of different genres and give you some picks for what I think you should pick up for them. First topic we're gonna talk about is disability issues and disability visibility is a book that almost everyone would recommend. This is an incredible collection. Uh, it's an anthology, so it's a bunch of different writers all talking about different versions of their own disabled life and how it fits in with society, and it's tremendous. Evicted has been out for about 10 years now, but it is truly one of the greatest sociological works that I have ever read. It's about the housing crisis, but also about poverty. It's so, so good, and you can probably find it pretty cheap right now. And if you want a book on the racist history of the United States, I would check out How the Word is Passed, which is one of the most beautiful books that I've ever read. It's kind of a road trip around racism throughout the United States. It's going to museums, cultural sites, and just talking about the issues that are still pervasive today. It's a phenomenal book that you absolutely should not pass on. Follow along and we'll do history next. What's this? We just like to make sure that you're aware of resources that are helpful with your autism diagnosis. No, why is this on here? Oh, yeah, the Autism Couples Workbook. It's a good resource for you and your partner to help understand each other better. No. Come again? You really should not be suggesting this book. Have you read it? Yeah, when I was first trying to figure out if I was autistic, and it's problematic. And you're sure you read this book? Autism Couples Workbook, second edition. Yeah. Um... Why do you think it's a problem? Let's say I wrote a book called The Allistic Couples Workbook, and it was designed to help the autistic partner learn how to deal with the allistic, and I wrote it like a dog training manual. Would you suggest that to newly diagnosed allistics? I've read this book. I don't think it talks about autistic people like they're dogs. I mean, pets, children, however you want to frame it, everything in the book is written like it's the autistic person's fault. Everything is how do you handle your autistic partner. But that's kind of the point. This is a new dynamic for you two. No, it's not. I've always been autistic. It's the label that's new. The label that is supposed to be helping me advocate for myself. I guess I'm not sure I see the importance of differentiating the two. Because the way the author views it is like, I just got hit by a car and now I'm dealing with a whole new physical situation. I don't think that's what's happening. You just said it's a whole new dynamic. It's not. The point is, I'm a human too. There's already enough stress navigating a marriage between two people that have vastly different brains. That's why we're giving you the list of helpful resources. But the effect is problematic. This book, actually most autistic resources that I have read, frame it as the holistic putting up with the autistic person, which puts the autistic person in a perpetual state of feeling like a burden. You're gonna find out autistic relationships come with a lot of issues. I've been in an autistic holistic relationship for over a decade. I'm aware. Chris, the, the list is just to help. Do you not understand when you frame it this way, it causes a power dynamic, which makes it harder to have a successful relationship. I don't think that's what she's trying to do. I don't know her intentions, but the effect is to cause the holistic partner to resent the autistic partner and to teach the autistic partner to feel forever indebted. It can be very hard for someone to learn that their partner is autistic. Yeah, I'm, I'm not dismissing that. But again, the effect is to cause the autistic person to feel like they can't advocate for themselves, which pushes them to keep overextending themselves. I mean, that's literally the reason that I came to see you. That furthers the burnout and causes more problems in the relationship. I just don't think that's what this book is doing, though. Okay. 
On the chapter of communicating, the author claims that the autistic brain can only track one piece of information at a time. There are rules here for how to give important information to your autistic partner, or how to get their attention, or get them to remember things. Wouldn't you want to know that? How to get your holistic partner's attention, how to get your holistic partner to remember things. It's important to remember that sometimes holistics cannot track as much information as autistics. She shows both sides, and you're still unhappy. Yeah, none of that holistic stuff is in here. Oh shit. Yeah, that's a problem. Watch my cats who hate change realize they're about to go on a road trip. Tired of adding Black Girl to your searches for outfit inspo on Pinterest? Welcome to my new series where I recreate Pinterest outfits that bring you a step closer to a melanated mood board one outfit at a time. On today's episode of Melanated Mood Board, I'm recreating this outfit. I'm starting off with this black turtleneck sweater from Urban Revio on ASOS. I'm then going to pair the top with straight leg black leather pants from Stradivarius, which is also found on ASOS. Hold on, my butt looks so good. For shoes, I'll be wearing my Panda Dunks. Not me looking like a modern day black Velma. I chose this beige long coat that I got like three years ago from Target. I don't own a Balenciaga, so I just use my Telfar as my black bag. And this is the final look. Tired of adding black girl to your searches for outfit inspo on Pinterest? Welcome to- This is a perfect example of white privilege. First and foremost, go watch the rest of that video. But basically what she's saying is as a black person or person of color, whenever you search something, white people come up as the default. And that really fucking sucks. So basically she's creating these looks so that people of color don't have to always try to just imagine themselves as the white people that they see when they search for outfits and stuff on Pinterest. And this shows up in many different facets of life. And when you actually start to look for it, you'll see that when things are the default, that is the place where the privilege lies. I couldn't tell you the amount of searches I've had to do where I search and I'm like, mm, not exactly what I need add black and then maybe I'll get some results that are accurate. So keep an eye out for this stuff. It's kind of subtle, but it's there. Okay, bye. I feel like talking in ASL is like playing a game of ping pong. Because like when you're speaking, all you need to do is hear. But in ASL, you need to see to hear. I remember this one time I was signing in public and there was two guys. One was over here and the other was over here. And they were noticed me signing and they both started signing back. I got so excited because we were all having a full conversation. But because one guy was over here and the other guy was over here, I had to like look, sign, look, sign. And I was so excited because I never have the chance to talk with hearing people in sign. If you know sign, we're besties. Hold your cats up to a wall, and if they stop themselves, they are smart. And if they don't, then well, they dumb. Oh, pumpkin, you idiot. Do you all have cereal in Africa? No, we don't have cereal in Africa, but anytime we need something flaky to take, we just go straight to the community river and grab an alligator or a fish, then scrape its scales into a bowl. And then next, we go straight to the cow ranch and milk a cow directly into the same bowl, then eat. And that's how we survive without cereal in Africa. Yeah.
My real guy if I look like a woman. I've said it before and I'll say it again, appearance does not determine identity. If you identify as a man, you are a man. I know I've made jokes before about conservative parents having visibly trans kids and being oblivious, but that's more of a commentary on the willful ignorance of parents. You don't have to look a certain way to identify a certain way, and yes, you are still allowed to be upset about people misgendering or denaming you even if you don't quote, look trans. Those who care about you should prioritize your mental well-being over their misconceived notions of what a man or a woman is. Yes, mistakes are different, but your friends and family should still consciously be trying to recognize you as the gender you are. No matter what stage of life or stage of transition you're in, you are trans enough to be here. Comment your name and pronouns if you feel so inclined, and I hope you have a lovely day.